Hello everyone and welcome to today's topo study. So today we'll be revisiting the topic of a nut. So I'm going to press X and delete the cube. We're going to press D, switch over to circle where we're already on six. So we could just cl click the six preset. And since we're on generic dots, we have world dots that we can snap to. I'm just going to jump off this dot and just begin drawing my nut. And from here, we're just going to tap into edit mode and go in and just add some extra loops to every face. So recently I've become a bit obsessed with these nuts. I'm just going to get it out there before a viewer gets me in the comments and how to properly model them. So from here, we're just going to press control shift B and then S Z zero and right click and use loop tools to select circle. So from here, we're just going to scale this piece out. So we get something looking kind of like a castle S Z zero again. And just like that, we have the foundations of our nut. So from here, let's control R, add a loop cut, and we are going to inset the base. And from here, we're just grabbing all of these edges and preparing to bevel them so we can basically have something holding onto the corners whenever it comes to the process of subdivision, which we are doing way out of order. So we could just let subdivision help us. So let's do that. We're going to first press Q and sharpen, which will get us something like this, which means we need to basically select this loop, this loop, unmark sharps, select the boundary, remark sharps, and then when we add subdivision, we can get something like this. So we were, we're just going to set it to one level of subdivision and then apply our geometry, giving us this as our result. So now, we are primed to actually grab all of our edges leading in and prepare to bevel them in order to reinforce the corner. So the reason that we bring in a layer of subdivision and then apply it is so that there's just a few more rounds to the circle. We could try solving for threads nicely with eight, just eight rounds of a circle, but it's just no fun. So from here, we're gonna press P and set our profile to one part of soling the bevel and then press A to go back to adjusting the bevel. So now we have a bevel with a profile of one. We'll just click and apply. And let's just select all these points, press M, merge at center. Let's try it again. Press M, merge at center. Alt X, move to the other side. We can just dissolve these two edges. Alt X, move it to the other side. Let's press period and set our pivot point to 3D cursor so we can select everything and press R60 to rotate it over to the other side and then we could just alt x mirror that as well just wrapping that up and from here we can just go underground merging everything at the center first we'll just grab all these and merge them at center utilizing shift r because shift r is very easy to grab on the keyboard and then we can go back and just dissolve those edges and use shift r on that as well so you can tell I've done this a lot. Just X, dissolve. Yeah, I think it's shift X to dissolve. I press it so much, I don't even think about what key it is anymore. So we're just gonna dissolve this point in the middle, select these points, right click with loop tools and turn this into a circle. Really, it doesn't matter what we do. We can actually grow this out and press F and right click this and turn it into a circle for all I care. In fact, let's grab this point in the middle and we're gonna press I to inset this so we have a nice flatty area and then we're just going to extrude it down so we're penetrating the bottom. We're gonna scale these points out and one of my favorite techniques to use with modeling now is just inner, boolean, inner mesh booleans like what we see here. So now this has been union together which means I can delete this and delete this and now we have a perfect connection made. In fact, if I select everything and press control tilde, you see that nothing is selected so we just continue on. So from here, we're just really looking hard at this top area because the more flat we make it, the easier it is on retaining the nut-like properties that we aspire to have. And let's just add a loop, slide it up, but we could press E in order to align it with the bottom loop or press F to perfectly align it with the top loop, making us not have to go all the way to the top anymore. So I just can't get over that and I'll be talking about it until the end of time now. So things didn't work out, and that's because this is not connected. Let's press Control T, Alt J to just end that. 
and now we are looking at the foundations of our nut. So we can put a loop here, we can put a loop here just to really harden these edges. With this area, we probably could have tightened it up, but we'll just give that a loop and just have a pretty nicely rounded nut. Nothing really to write home about. And so now we can get to my favorite part, which is the thread. So if we put two levels of subdivision, we have a pretty good looking nut. We can actually duplicate this off to the side just in case we need to return to the save state later, talking like we're in an emulator. Let us go ahead and turn off showing subdivision edit mode, and I'm going to just grab this loop and press P, and we're gonna separate it. And let's also grab this loop at the bottom, and we're just gonna set our origin there because I can just see the future. So similar to um, the Vaughn in 60 seconds, uh, technique, we are just going to add a few loops and then we're going to rip one side and then turn on proportional editing. He showed it from a, Maya, a Moto perspective, but I immediately made the connection between the linear transformer and proportional editing. So we just bring these pieces till they almost meet, you know, pretty much as close as possible. And then if we are lucky, then we can remove vertices and it will say that it removed none even when we raise the count up, but when we raise the count up, it says it got 11, so we're not so lucky today. Let's press Control B in order to bevel, and we're just gonna give this one loop. I'm gonna deselect this face and this face, and we're just gonna press E, and before we Alt S, we need to turn off proportional editing. Like I said, I can see the future now. I'm clairvoyant. So for this area, we are just going to select one, two, three, four, and fill that in select everything that's uneven with this top area, which is pretty much everything to about here, it appears. And let's just E, Z, period, to set our origin to 3D cursor. Let's make sure Verdi Merge is on. And S, Z, to just flatten everything to that particular point. So now we have a nice flat base that has the same point count as we intend for maintaining this for merging back with the base. And so now we just need to deal with this top area. So every time I deal with this, I come into a very different topological issue that is a nightmare. So let's see what we go for this time. We're gonna move this area down and we're gonna bring this up to create a certain type of thread. I forgot its name, but I remember it as being a type of thread that maybe I wanna go for on the next time I make a nut. So. Something like that, we see that subdivision's just really having its way with it. So let's control R, add a loop in there just to really uh, subdivide the surface. And things are holding together pretty well topologically, all things considered. So I'm just going to select one point, control click to the next point, and then just hop around like a homeless person. And we're just going to grab all of our points and extrude up and then take our pivot point off of pivot, off of 3D cursor and set it to just median. So we get something like that. So with my last screw adventures, all my flashbacks keep coming back to me. I've actually done so many um, nuts. You know, I get, get nuts and screws confused now. So I apologize for that if you're a um, tool nut or, or just a literal nut, you know, maybe I'm uh, marginalizing your people screws so let's control b and we'll roll one loop and we're looking so far so good except for all the tension that's happening in this area so like i said every time i deal with this it just becomes complex geometrically so sometimes simplifying it is my best hope but we can't simplify ourselves to nothing and aspire to get away with it so we're going to need to connect to just some of the nearest junction areas and we see just how much tension we're creating on this area. So let's up the ante on the tension we're creating with just one more loop to try to hold it in. And just like that, we are in the money. So, you know, whenever it comes to subdivision, the amount of segments you have on your cylinder is gonna determine how much distortion happens. So we are definitely pushing our topology to the limits. We probably need just one more layer of subdivision to really hold this together, but instead, I'm gonna try just negotiating. Like maybe sub, maybe the sub D gods will cut us a break if we just subtract some of the geometry itself that it intends to take. So maybe something like that's a little bit better. However, 
if we can't get this perfect, it will end this video without up upload. Seriously, because I mean, I always go back and try to at least put some sort of level of quality on this. So having it be unacceptable is definitely never my goal. You know, when people are pointing out stuff with the threads, I was like, oof, you know, got a point. So we're gonna just S and Z to bring this down. And let's try that again, S, Z, and we're just gonna snap to this point, which means that we could press S, Shift, Z in order to scale it in. Let's S, Z again. And what are we snapping to? Increment? No wonder we're not getting anywhere. So snap to point. Sorry, I'm just goofing off, but I figured this would be a good revisit because, you know, can't can't let the, the nuts win. Um, where the nuts? No, I'm kidding, I, I gotta stop calling ourselves nuts here so just sliding some pieces out and just like that we have now created a subdivision nut and comparing this with the previous studies like especially the initial one that did in the tutorial was really unsatisfactory so i apologize for that that video has been unlisted so we'll call this topo study nut and we are on the 14th nut so it so people were asking they're like why are you modeling something i was like because i haven't got it right yet uh, I haven't got it right yet at all. It's just people are saying that my nuts are off and my threads are backwards. So looking at this, I can't even tell if it's the right type of threading. You know, in the event that it is backwards, just know that you can isolate this whole selection, control M, flip it on a 3D cursor and just reverse it on the fly. So with that, we have made our nuts successfully. Um, I, I won't make any inappropriate jokes there, but let's just save it and step back and just admire this nut.